All right, guys, we're live for the 89th installment of the Unplugged Alpha podcast series. The title of this one is They Probably Aren't Your Friends. So I've got a little bit of a backstory to share with you guys on this topic and some best practices for, I guess, essentially vetting guys to invite into your life as far as, uh, well, I've got to mute my other screen here. Sorry. Uh, when you're inviting guys in your life as uh, friends and kind of like moving through that path. Um, got a bit of a special show here tonight too, because we're trying something a little bit different with, um, the call in segment to try to make it a little more seamless. So quick announcement, PSA, if you will. Um, I've got Moff in the admin panel and I have the, um, I guess it's an upgraded account with a green room now. So what's going to happen is when I drop the join link and I'm actually going to do that now, um, I'm going to grab the join link for you guys. And you'll you'll hop into the studio slash green room area and Moff will check your audio to make sure you're clean and um, just make sure that you got a good question lined up for the show. Let me mute that so that doesn't ring. So if you guys want to if you want to hop in for Q&A tonight, this is how you're going to do it. And it's all into one panel now. So we'll see how this new system works on StreamYard. Um, so I will pin that to the top. It's a StreamYard link. Keep in mind, I've got a, a few things to cover before I start the Q&A segment, but you know, you can wait in the uh, green room area and you can watch the show from there. It should work from that segment as well. All right. So let's get started. And Moff, let me know if there's any problems with the, uh, with the show in the private chat as far as doing the... Uh, the check-ins. Um, so look, like the cost of crap friends can be expensive, just like the cost of inviting the wrong woman into your life can be expensive. There's, there's a price to pay. Um, you want to vet as thoroughly as possible, but you're not using the same red flag system that I've devised and put in the first book to sort of establish whether or not she's the kind of woman that you want to invite in your life because um, is slightly different. I mean, there's some similarities again. I mean, you wouldn't want to have friends that are violent, you know, they get a bad temper, um, but their notch count doesn't matter. You, you know, you don't care if they've run around for, you know, 10 years with a bunch of gals that, that, that that's really not that significant to be honest with you. Um, baby rabies and a few of the others, but if you're not attentive to the guys that you hang out with, they will drag you down. I've talked about anchors and sales. We'll get into the vetting section, but I've but I've gotten involved with so one, two, three, four, probably five or six different dudes that have made intentional moves towards complicating my life unnecessarily. And the character and the show of character is a leading indicator of the kind of person that you will. And I'll just share some personal stories, you know, without giving away specific details and names, obviously. But the types of guys that you're going to run into out there, they're always a lot of fun. You know, you're going to you're going to meet them in your younger years or a good laugh. You drink with them, you know, you, you party with them sort of thing. You might start going to the gym with them. You're working out. They're going to threaten to teabag you if you don't push the weight harder. You know, you guys hang out, you might start riding motorcycles together, spending late nights, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning, racing, doing all kinds of stuff, riding ramps, drinking, you know, coffees and stuff like that and ripping up and down the roads in the middle of the night. These kind of guys, you know, will seem like a lot of fun. You know, you go out and pick up girls together. Um, I did loads of this stuff, you know, in my 20s on the motorcycles. We, you know, we'd have a spare helmet, throw them on the back sort of thing. Um, they're like my brother from another mother. They are, and that's where you get to. But if you're, but if you're not attentive to the sort of character that they have, and you look past negative traits, um, I did this myself. Like I had a friend that um, did some underhanded stuff. If we're being honest, um, these people will drag you down, man. Like things like, you know, he would tell me stories proudly how you know he would go over to his friend's place or his mom, you know, would be around. She's, of course, divorced, you know, single and ready to mingle sort of thing. Had him, had the other friend when she was younger, and he would bang his friend's mom and, you know, proudly boast about it. He would, um, you know, go out and about and bang friends, uh, girlfriends. 
um, if, if they were in a fight or something like that, or a little bit of a scrap or a break, we were on a break. Um, you know, he, 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 he'd snake his way in, you know, he'd basically worm his way into her pants sort, sort of thing. That's, those are all pretty strong indicators of shit character, right? Um, there's got to be some sort of moral compass or boundary when it comes to dudes, when you invite them into your life. And I think that, and I've said this before, you know, you can't trust guys that can't get laid and you can't trust guys that are obsessed about getting laid. I mean, if they're at the point where they're banging other friends, moms, or they're banging, you know, other friends, girlfriends sort of thing, um, that's some questionable behavior and it should be a strong indicator. This isn't somebody that you want to spend a great deal of time with travel with, uh, bring into a business, you know, that you might be running. Um, these are all things that might seem entertaining and fun when you're having good laughs and you're sitting around late at night, you know, chuckling about life and, oh yeah, you know, we'll be doing this when we're 90 years old and, you know, clicking your cans together sort of thing. It might seem comfortable. It might seem convenient, but who are these guys? You know, um, I'll tell you exactly who they are because I've had friends like this and they're the kind of guys that will bang your girlfriend. They're the kind of guys that, um, will want to get involved in your business dealings. For example, you know, if they see you doing things, putting bigger and bigger dents in the universe and essentially, you know, starting to pulling some, some bucks to lux, like you're making some bank and they want a piece of that pie, they'll worm their way in, you know? Oh yeah. You know, I've got capabilities. I'll, I've got skills. I'll go and do it. I'm telling you, like I've seen guys do that and you know, you bring them in on your biz, you know, you bring them in on projects you're working on. There's the old saying, bullshit baffles brains. And uh, they'll start uh, strategizing and planning behind the scenes and doing things to sort of, um, how can I put it? We'll just say jeopardize your business, you know, your, you know, your business model, compete against you, steal clients, steal contracts, stuff like that. The moral character of somebody will be on display. You want a guy that you can trust. You can't trust a guy that's banging your friend's moms. You just can't. <laughs> sure, have a laugh about it, but you can't trust the guy. I mean, is this somebody that you would want to have around your family that you'd want to invite over to dinner, that you'd want around your kids, want around your daughter even? Absolutely not. You know, these are these are moral judgments that you have to make. You got to size people up. You got to get good at sizing people up. If you, if you can't size people up, if you can't evaluate what they're made of, you know, the you know, the fabric of their being, then why are you hanging around these people? Like these are basic skills, okay? Um, you know, one of the things that we've talked about before is before you get too serious with a chick, you want to spend like a year or two with her to see what she's made of. You know, when stress is applied to that relationship, like you travel somewhere and your luggage gets lost, does she have a total meltdown? Does she start yelling at the airline, at the stewardess and all that sort of thing? Or does she say, I don't worry about it. Let's go to the store and, you know, grab some bathing suits and a few things and we'll be fine for the rest of the week sort of thing. We'll deal with the luggage later, right? It's the same sort of thing with guys, you know, with friends, right? Like, are they, are they an anchor or are they a sale? So let's get into, you know, the vetting component, right? Because this is straight up easy. You know, once you, once you get a good handle, on, like this is stuff that I wish that I knew in my twenties that I only figured out probably in the last decade or two. Right. And it cost me lawsuits, right. Suing friends that did underhanding things to try to ruin business, try to steal business, try to steal co uh, customer contracts and uh, clients, things like that. Co it costs you sleepless nights. You know, it, like you will be betrayed by women in your life. And you will be betrayed by friends if you let it happen. But if you're, and I'm not saying build walls around yourself, but I'm saying learn how to size people up, right? Like see what they're made of, see how they behave in scenarios where you'd expect them to have your back. Like one of the most important things that I've, and I've said this many, many times before guys is your very good friends, your absolute best friends will talk shit to your face. Nice shirt. Does it come in men's <laughs> nice car? Too bad. It's too slow. You see what I'm saying, right? Like they'll like they'll talk shit to your face, but every single time you guys are apart, right? He's always got your back. That's a strong leaning indicator. <clears throat> now, again, um, Moff is in the uh, green room area. So if you guys have a question, you're going to want to get that StreamYard link clicked at the top. 
can get yourself squared away for the Q and A segment to make sure your audio is good and all that. He'll be able to test that out before we go live, but we'll do it after the ad break. So again, let's go through the points with uh, vetting. Well, let's deal with the anchors and sales again. Anchor sales, straightforward stuff. Dealing with the sailboat, you know me. It's one of the things that I pay attention to as I'm, as I'm getting older into the autumn years. Definitely want to get on water more, especially in the Caribbean, especially in the Mediterranean. It's going to happen. Anchors and sails. Anchors hold you. You drop the hook in the water. It's it's supposed to prevent you from moving around. A little bit of slippage, but it's, again, it's supposed to prevent you from moving around. People have to go into these two categories. You know, these, these friends of yours, the business associates, whatever it is that you happen to be rolling with, they have to go in one of the two categories, anchors or sales. Are they holding you back? Are they holding you in place? Or are they allowing you to move to your next port of call, right? To your next destinations as you as you progress through that passage, right? Are they anchors or are they sales? <clears throat> next point, average of the five you're going to spend the most time with. I said this before, and I'm going to keep hammering on this because it's so important. Take a look at the people around you, your five closest friends that you spend the five, not even five, let's just say, the people that you spend the most time with could be three of them, could be five of them, but the people that you spend the most time with will rub off on you and you will become the average of those people. You spend time with five broke, dumb losers that are doing absolutely nothing with their life. They're incompetent. They're a bad moral character. You will become the six. It is impossible, absolutely impossible to soar like an eagle if you surround yourself with turkeys. Do not surround yourself with turkeys. Take a look at the five people you're spending the most time with right now and categorize them. I'm serious. Categorize them. Are they contributing to the best version of yourself? Are they helping you move along to get to the better version of yourself? Do they support that better version of yourself? If you paint a picture and you say, I'm not riding sport bikes anymore. I need a Lambo. I'm going to go out and do this, this, and this to go get the Lambo. Are they all about, yeah, I'm down with that, man. Let's move up the ladder. Let's move up to the next level. Let's start doing this, that, or the other thing. Let's go beyond just this area here. Let's go up to this area here. Are they are they moving into these categories? Do they, do they contribute to the best version of yourself? Straightforward question. It's not complex, right? Are they supporting and facilitating dreams and goals that you're setting? If you deviate from them, let's say, you know, you've set a very clear and concise goal. And if you deviate from them, are they saying, yo, hold on a second, hold you accountable. What are you doing this for over here? If it's not aligned with what you said you wanted to do over there, that's a good friend. That's somebody that you'd want to bring along with you. That's a sale that's going to help you move along, you know, that passage to your next port of call, right? Facilitating and supporting the dreams and goals and holding you accountable. Hold you accountable is huge, man. You know, guys that are all like, oh, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to develop a strong muscular uh, physique or frame or I'm going to get into uh, boxing and have a fight or whatever it happens to be. Cool. Are they sparring with you? Are they going to the gym with you? Are when you're on the bench press um, and you're at your one rep max, are they throwing on another two and a half pounds on either side and spotting you on that and threatening to teabag you if you don't get the weight back up to the top? Are they those guys, you know? Are they holding you accountable afterwards when you leave the gym to go get something to eat? And they say, nah, you know, we can't go to McDonald's. We got to go get some proper uh, chicken and rice over here at this place, right? Because that's what you want. That's how you should be evaluating the friends that you surround yourself with. Are you guys on the same path? Are you on the same mission, right? Are you holding you guys, are you holding each other accountable to these standards to get to those goals? You know what they are. You know, people are, well, how do you lose weight? Move more eat better. That's the summary. Move more as far as lifting heavy things, picking them up and putting them back down. You want to get better at uh, realms of combat, pick up boxing, whatever it is, you know that you want to happen to do and start going with the guys. Get some gloves and some mitts and go out to the park and train. Skip rope before you're training together. Push yourself from four minutes to five minutes. Next, you know, next month it's five minutes to six minutes of, of skipping rope before you get started. And again, I think one of the most important indicators, and as you get older and you get into relationships, or if you have kids and you have family events, I've seen this. Like I've seen some of the shittiest people that I know, they don't have good interactions with family. 
some of the best people that I know, like some of the best souls that I know, they've got great family and family's always there for them and they're there to support. And they're the kind of people it's like, you know, you can bring your family into or you can bring your kids into those environments and room and you can trust them there, right? Like, is this, is this somebody that I can leave my daughter in a room with and feel comfortable and confident everything is good? And, and if somebody breaks into the house, they're going to protect that kid and defend the home and the child from the intruder sort of thing like is that the kind of friend that you're bringing along it's important to contemplate it's really important man all right let me get this uh super chats and see what's going on in here miguel says i just moved to a small town what's the best way to start networking and meet new high quality people most people here are retired and i'm 43 small towns are tough uh, depending on the size of the small town and Miguel, if you'd like, you can click the, um, the link, hop in and ask a question there at the top here. Let me put the banner up Let me put the banner up for the call link. There you go. Q and a is open. You can hop in and ask a question live too. Um, depends on the size of the town where it's located. Um, if you're in a retirement community, um, that's a bit tougher, but to be honest with you, like some, some of my close friends are older guys. They're, they're well into their, like into the autumn years of their life. And I like these guys because they're calm, they're cool. They've got a lot of experiences. We've got loads of stories. Um, there's a lot going on and there's a lot to contemplate when you have conversations with these guys. So I don't think that you want to discount them based on age, right? I mean, there's certain things that they can still do. You can play golf with older dudes. You can shoot guns. You can hunt. There's lots of stuff that you can do. So don't discount somebody that might be a little bit older than you, but just start looking for things like local meetups in facebook groups that you're interested in if you like motorcycle join you know i'm just gonna use toronto toronto's obviously not a small town but you know toronto local you know squids you know toronto local motorcycle meetup toronto local cruisers club um you like motorcycles you like uh overlanding you know if you're into jeeps or you know forerunners and stuff like that and doing all that stuff just hit it from the angle that you like uh that's usually the best way that i find to do it and if you're unplugged. Like if you're a red pill guy, you want to surround yourself with guys like that that get it. So you ask them, you know, leading questions, right? Like what are your political values? What do you think of uh, the fat acceptance movement? You know, things like this to sort of get the ball rolling. Um, that's always a good place to start, but just look for local stuff, right? All right. So guys, if you want to ask a question, the Q&A will be open soon. Hop in and ask a Q. It's pinned up there at the top. If you're watching this elsewhere on the interwebs, you're going to have to head over to YouTube. So I'll drop that link. Head over to YT is what all that means. Straightforward system. You're going to click it through. Moff's going to check your audio, make sure your question's clear and concise, and then move you into the waiting area. And then we'll get through all the Q&A. We've got loads of time for Q&A tonight. Don't leave it to the last minute. That's what people always do. And then the, and the Q&A room is full, and I have to end the show. So get in now, get in early, and ask your questions right at the beginning if you want to get into that stuff. All right. All right, let me uh, run the ad reel and we'll get to some questions in a little bit. Be back in like two minutes, all right? This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China and plastic bottles, Mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness, 
to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. All right, let's do this. It's just texting my uh, boxing trainer, lining up my next uh, session. I'm telling you guys, here's, here's some places where you'll find some of the best people. Okay. <clears throat> Start with stuff that you're interested in, you like motorcycles, you like cars, you like hunting, you like archery, whatever it happens to be, join clubs and stuff that you're interested in. Ideally masculine pursuits, you know, the kind of stuff that I talk about, the sorts of crowds that I run with. So ideally that sort of stuff, right? Then spend time with them, have drinks, grab uh, breakfast. You know, one of the, um, one of the things that I've done a lot of over the last couple of years is I've met a lot of people just through the content that I put on my stuff. And it's like, you know, if a dude's really cool and I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to go to the shooting range instead of going there and meeting him and just, you know, go and shoot some uh, skeet and trap. Let's grab some breakfast. They have food there in the morning. Break bread. Break bread's a great way. Breaking bread is a great way to sort of, you know, get aligned and do th doing things like that. Beyond that, it's, it's after hour stuff, man. It's after hour stuff. You know, you have to start developing subgroups. Um, when I joined the, um, the, uh, so I'm, the exotic car club here in Toronto basically has a large contingent of, of members. There's probably 150 members. And then about half of them do the rallies. You know, the other half, they don't have the time because it's five, six days. They don't have the commitments. But the ones that do the five, six day rallies, you get about 75 or so cars. And then you start hanging out. You're driving, you're talking, you're, you know, when you're taking breaks, when your gas station breaks, so you start to develop friendships and you kind of move into these cliques, right? So we've got a, a subgroup within the rally club that has its own chat. We have our own radio channel when we're using the radios on the rallies. Um, we get together for Christmas. We get together for uh, kids' birthdays. We get together for boating events, for fishing, all kinds of stuff. Use those opportunities beyond just in the, in those groups. And also the other place, a lot of guys are like, well, I don't know where to find cool guys, you know, strong guys, you know, virtuous guys, this and that. Join a, some kind of a dojo, man, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, boxing, kick. It doesn't matter what it is. Go in, go and find guys that like to compete in the physical realm of combat and test yourself. Um, most guys quit. I'll be honest with you. Most guys don't have a lot of sticking power. There's some go that'll go just for keeping skills honed. My favorite are the older guys. Like uh, there's different classes at the dojo that I go. So you get these Krav Maga classes, kickboxing. There's ones with Cali sticks, all that kind of stuff. But the older like Eastern Euro, uh, Israeli, Russian sort of Krav guys, those guys are really fun to train and work out with. And they always got really good stories too. Like, you know, they've been here for 10, 20 years, but they, they still have the strong accent. They're still strong as shit. Like they've got physical capabilities that most people, like you'd see them walking down the street and as long as they're upright, you just think to yourself, okay, no problem. But as soon as they're called upon to do something physical, they just, they just jump right in it. They're really, really good guys. I'm telling you, these are the places to go do that. All right, let's grab some of these call-ins over here. Again, guys, if you want to call in, the uh, StreamYard link is pinned live at the top. So go hit that, and um, you'll be able to ask questions tonight live on the show. We got uh, Cowboy. What's up, Cowboy? Uh, just curious. I, uh, I've i been backstage by most of the friends of a good group. She's on a smear campaign, and I don't really know how to deal with it. The a girl from the group is on a smear campaign, or is it somebody that you're dating? Oh, this is an ex. And what's happening? What is she doing? Uh, just running my name through the mud, uh, false allegations. You know the story a divorce, how it goes, assassination uh, of your character. I broke my neck. I was on the episode 80, told you about that. Uh, the bad tick bite, haha. Uh, so many friends have gone with her uh because we were all a group of friends mm -hmm. and they you you know the title of it was they're not your friends well p 
people I've known for 15, 20 years, I thought were very near and dear to me have just ghosted me and nope. What is she telling them? Oh, you know, the typical narcissistic, abusive, uh, you weren't in the home, so you didn't know those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And these guys are no longer talking to you as a result of her storytelling? For sure. And they were friends of yours too? Yes, sir. Uh, I raised boats in a very private community. Uh, we run shallow rivers. Yeah. I got 600 horse in my boat, plus I hit it with a 300 shot of nitrous. Uh, very tight knit group of people. Um, the place we camped at, we had 20 campers. Everybody was a couple. We were all friends. Two of the gentlemen in that group have reached out. Hey, it's been a year. How you doing? Haven't heard from you. Mm -hmm. And I basically self isolated. I'm trying to re, uh, reassert my life and, uh, you know, the broken neck thing. That's a big thing. Uh, the tick bite was a big thing. So I, I'm, I'm trying to realign my life with higher standards and, and higher quality people. But when they're the highest quality people in your town, you start to think maybe I should move towns. Where do you live? Uh, about an hour south of St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Um, look, man, at the end of the day, uh, you've formed this like vortex of like friendships when you travel in circles, you know, either with your wife or with your girlfriend for a while. And they start talking to wives and girlfriends and friends become friends of those sorts of things. And at the end of the day, like if me and my gal broke up and friends that we had that we traveled in circles with, let's say, you know, that's the rally group or something like that. And then they stopped talking to me or they didn't want to hang out anymore. If I text them and say, Hey, you know, let's go get a coffee or let's go to this place and do something. And they weren't responsive or they made up excuses. Who cares? You know, they've done you a favor. You know, do you have to, do you have to get up and explain yourself to them? Do you have to ask them, you know, why are you listening to my crazy ex? Cause if they're, cause if they're that gullible and they're that persuadable, do you really want them as friends? No. And I've realized that like, uh, the sincerity of people is genuinely 90%, not as much as you're going to give. And, you know, like I said at the start of the show, like you will be betrayed by women in your life and you will be betrayed by friends. These are the two most difficult areas that you have to contend with when you're a man is that people are going to fuck you over. Your friends will screw you over and women will screw you over. And I'll be honest with you, they hurt just as much. Right. You know, like if you ego invest into a friendship with a guy and you travel and you do things together and you build bikes together and you you race together and you do all this sort of stuff. And then all of a sudden they just turn around and they backstab you. It hurts just as much as if a chick goes and bangs another guy. It's another, it, it's just another form of betrayal. Right? So when somebody shows you who, who they are, what's the old saying? Believe them, right? You know? So how do you develop a, a true network of friends? I mean, dude, I was in the Marine Corps. That's blood brothers. Like you can't. Yeah. So what happened to all those guys that you, you know, came up with? uh time drifts you apart uh, location you don't hang out as much i mean i could still call them and they'd still be there for me but it's not a it's not a weekly it's not a monthly it's not a daily need it's a once every two three years yeah uh those were the guys that i hung out with every single weekend you know make it more frequent you know make it a reason for you guys to get together like uh look I've got some local friends, but I've also got guys in my community. Like I've talked about my 1% community for years now. Um, it started out as like a Patreon tier basically. And then I pulled it off that platform and off Facebook. So I don't like the way that it was going. So I have a private community. And if you guys, you know, see my social media stuff, like if I'm, if I'm on Instagram, you'll see me traveling to places like Colorado skiing with a lot of these guys or a couple of weeks ago, we just went hunting, you know, or I'll travel down to the Caribbean, right. You know, sort of thing. So it's like, there's opportunities to network with other people that don't live in your city. And I don't mind traveling for that. I'm not a guy that really likes to travel, to be honest with you. Like I'm not, I'm not down with airports and air travel. It's a real pain in the ass. I kind of hate it at this stage. I did just join the 10% community and I did good. do the uh, school of entrepreneurship. Okay. And good, I'm good. loving them both. Good. Uh, so, yeah, so that's a good starting area. Like that's a staging ground, right? But 
like most of the like higher level meetups and conversations like the like the hunting stuff was only extended to guys in the one percent community that are top tier generals that have been around for a while and prove themselves so you have to get involved you have to have conversations hop into the zoom calls hey you know this is going on what's going on somebody asks a question i have experience with that let me see what i can do to be useful there sort of thing you see what i'm oh, saying I, right like I, you get I, out I of it what you put into it i network a lot i've, I've been hog hunting uh uh, Circle K hog, uh, hog hunting ranch in Texas uh, is a good friend of ours. Uh, mm -hmm. I love hunting. I love killing shit and stuffing it and putting it on the wall. But those weren't the guys that I did that stuff with. Those were the guys that I hung out uh, weekend soccer games, putting the kids together. And mm -hmm. all of that has been divided, uh, which is it's a very hard pill to swallow. Reach out, make the effort if it's not reciprocated or if they ghost you or they, I heard your wife said this, that, or the other thing, or, you know, you hear it from someone else. It's just like, why even bother with them? Like, there's one thing that I've learned about friendships as I've gotten older, because I've, because I've seen this over and over again, cowboy, you know, I've seen this in my twenties and my thirties. I've even seen it in my forties now dealing with guys in a mano swamp, right? Like, you know, you think people are your friends and they've got your back when you help them out, when you lift them up, when you answer their questions, when you uh, protect them, when other people are trying to attack them sort of thing, but they don't really, like, you're going to get that in life. It's, it's, it's always going to exist. You just have to leave these people behind. And you don't have to hate them. You don't have to ruin their lives. You don't have to do anything malicious like some of these asshats do. Just put some distance. That's all it is. And you, and you move on. Um, you know, you have these epochs, you have these chapters in your life, right? Like what you're doing now is not what you were doing in your thirties or even in your twenties or your teens. And that's okay. Like a lot of people think that you make friends for lives. Like people put so much emphasis in high school friendships, you know, in the teen years and even in the twenties. And I'll be honest with you, there's probably one guy that I have in my phone right now. If I were to call him, he'd probably answer from high school. The rest of them, I don't even talk to. Right. And that's OK. That's OK. You just leave those friendships behind. You just leave them behind. No, I, I get it. I went to three different high schools. I made many, many of friends. And I, I I take that back. I made many of acquaintances. That's, that's exactly it. A, they, uh, th that's the distinguishing difference. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, your best friends, you can walk up to their front door at two o'clock in the morning with a shovel in your hand and say, I got a problem. It's in my trunk. I need help. And his answer will be like, we taking your car or mine. Doesn't ask yeah, him what that, the problem that, that's is. That's a good friend, but those are. Doesn't ask him what the help things. is, right? Like those are the kind of guys that have your back. It's the kind of guys that will talk shit to your face. They'll make fun of your car. They'll make fun of your boat. They'll say your motorcycle is too feminine. Nice bike. Does it come in men's or something like that? But they'll always yeah. protect you behind your back. So when your ex-wife or your ex-girl talks shit about you, they don't want to hear it. I know Cowboy is my boy. I trust him. I'm not interested in hearing your narcissistic rants about blah, 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 or whatever it happens to be. So when they pick a side like that and they've shown you who they are, then do yourself a favor and just don't even bother them. You know, if you want companionship, just get a dog. I always tell guys this. You know, they want they want a woman as a companion. They want a, a best friend. That's 18 years of marriage, man. That's going to be your best friend. 20 years together. I will tell you, there is no such thing as your woman is your best friend yeah. your best friend isn't even your best friend because if he could he would bang your old lady just because that's the way it works it's a very uncomfortable and unfortunate fact and truth yes it is i agree i uh i appreciate talking to you sir i appreciate all you do and uh hopefully you can help some more men uh get better cool. in life hop in the zoom call tomorrow we're on at uh three for the school of entrepreneurship I will do, sir. We'll talk some more then. All right, man. Thank you. See you, buddy. All right. Guys, if you want to call in and ask a question, the link is pinned at the top of StreamYard. You can go ahead and hit that. Um, Moff, I'm going to pull you in for a sec. I want to get your uh, take on this kind of as a co-host on this uh, bit. Do you have any stories or any experiences where you've dealt with this stuff with like a real POS in your life that was a friend that let you down? Am I coming in clear or am I slow? I know my connection no, is not good, great man. tonight. Yeah. All no, right. You're clear. Oh, man. I mean, friends come and go like the seasons, man. It's just kind of the way things go. 
Uh, you go through different, like you said, you go through different epochs in life. I think me personally, I always kind of bounced from friend group to friend group. You know, I had friends in high school and then when you go to college, you make college friends and then you graduate and you guys kind of move to new cities or you, you know, you get jobs in different areas and then your coworkers become your friends. Well, then COVID sort of you know wrecked everything. Everybody's working remote from home. And so you don't get a ton of human interaction. And so, you know, for me, what I've found in the 1% community is exactly what you talked about earlier. It's what was interesting about the hog hunt is that we had guys from pretty much every corner of the country or North America that were in attendance, except for like far, far West. But when we went to Breck in February, same thing. We had guys from as far West as Vegas uh, and as far East as a place like Nashville or Tampa for yours truly. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily always have to be guys in your backyard. It's always nice. It's always cool for that to, for that to be the case. And like, we've got a small cohort of guys here in Tampa that are a mixture of one percenters and 10 percenters. And so we try to get together and do a, a regular meetup or a monthly thing, at least whether that's, you know, riding motorcycles or that's cigars and that's just doing different stuff down here. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's just one of those things that it's, it's tougher for guys that grew up with really strong friendships and relationships that have to kind of grow up and grow out of that. I was a little different where I had a group of friends in high school, but I was always kind of the outlier. And a lot of those guys are still friends today. Now I can call a couple of them up and we'll still exchange happy birthday messages once a year. But that's, that's kind of what that delves into. You go into your text messages and somebody, you know, wishes you happy birthday and you scroll mm -hmm. up two inches. And that was also the last message they sent you know, one year ago was happy birthday. So yeah. The, um, like like, is that somebody that you can really call a friend? Because I kind of went through this exercise a couple of years ago on my Facebook friends list because, you know, Facebook's been around for a few decades now since, what, 2006 or seven or something like that. Yeah. And I went through the friends list. and I'm like, do I really know these people? Like, have I have I talked to them in the last couple of years or are they and I don't even have like my birthday published. So, like, you know, the people that are all happy birthday, you know, with the annual message on your on your wall or whatever the hell, you know, the setup is over there. I just unfriended a whole bunch of people and I've never heard from them since because they weren't really close friends. And that's all I really care about. I don't care about, oh, the popularity contest of having, you know, the 5,000 friend max limit on Facebook, which seems to be important to some people. It's like, I'd rather have a hundred or 150, like whatever, like a small group of people that I can lean on where I can be like, yo, I'll call them and they'll answer the phone. Or even if they don't answer the phone, they'll just say, yo, I'm in a meeting. I'll call you right back though. Right. Those right. are your friends. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, and you've got to invest in friendships and you've got to invest in relationships just like you would with anything. So, um, you know, you've got to find guys that are going to be worth the time and worth the investment. And there are a lot of snakes out there. There's a lot of guys that, you know, I kind of have sort of an unwritten rule for myself where I generally don't spend a lot of time with guys that are not in the community or that are moving towards the community just because it's they've got skin in the game in a way right so i know how they think i know how yeah. kind of how they operate you know maybe they're not ready to pony up and, and kind of join 100 percent in just yet but they're at least going to be like-minded in certain aspects and areas of life and they're uh, going to be able to chat on similar wavelengths rather than uh, guys that just are you know mr mom or blue pilled guy or whatever mm -hmm. um so those are the things you tend to to look for. You know, the first thing I do is like, okay, what you, you got to size somebody up. You got to figure out what they're about and what, what kind of what they're into. And you you can usually tell you get you get pretty good to a point where you can tell within a few minutes whether this is a guy you want to hang out with more than once or is it just like, a, hey, how's it going? And then you never want to talk to him again. So, yeah, yeah, that uh, gut feel that you get around certain people is something you want to pay attention to, man. You don't you don't hone that skill. As a young man, I don't think it, it, it takes a bit, you know, <laughs> that, that, uh, you know, that guy that I mentioned, it's like, you know, banged his best friend's mom sort of thing. Yeah. It's like, he kind of laughed at it at the time, like, ha ha ha. But when you look back on it, it's like, that guy's got zero moral character at all, at all. And then he went on to like screw other people, you know, as a consequence of that, or at least as like a leading indicator, if you can put it that way. Yeah. And it takes getting burned, I think. And if you're somebody who's never been burned, comes whether it's 
Exactly. And if you're somebody who's never been burned, whether that's um, a relationship with a woman or friendships or business, then you probably haven't lived a lot of life. You probably don't have a lot of experiences and I probably wouldn't want to share a beer with you or, or get a cigar or anything like that. Mm. Um, you know, so that when you, when we have a mutual, you know, very successful friend based down in Texas who was talking about meeting up with some guys and it's like, yeah, within the first 30 seconds, I was able to size them up and something was just off about it. Mm. And that guy is somebody who as a part of his profession has seen probably at this point, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. So he's been in the game for that long. And same thing with other guys that run their own businesses and have customers and things like that. You start to be able to, to see those indicators and and then you apply you apply that to your own life and guys you want to spend time with and hang out with. And it really does change in person too. You know, so I think what a lot of guys tend to miss is that, oh well, you know, online friendships or this and that, you know, we find time to meet up. Like we get together, we do things. And the stuff we do when we get together is always like it's cool biblical. shit. It's not just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, these are epic trips that people look at and they're like, well, how do I find a tribe of guys to do this? What's it? Like, you, you, you get some skin in the game and you become part of it and you get active and you add value and you get people know you and you, you, you do shit that's worth, you know, guys like that wanting to be around you. But if yeah, you haven't done absolutely. anything and you're not a guy that people want to spend, you know, time with, then what, what value do you bring? Like, why why would anybody want to spend any time around you? Yeah, exactly. What do you what do you bring to the table that's uh, going to be useful? Like, what skill or tool do you have that the uh, network wants? Um, I'm going to grab this link again and drop it in the chat. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing it, but if you want to get on and ask a question live on the show, hit the screen the stream yard link. It's pinned at the top. All right, Moff, I'll pull you back out. Talking a bit. Cool. Uh, there we go. Solo layout. <clears throat> Grab this link over here. I wish this thing would copy and paste easier. Um, here, I'll grab a new link. Invite. Copy. Abs in a bucket. You guys familiar with that, Terp? People don't like like you getting better. They don't like seeing you improve. They don't like seeing you get to the next level. You know, it's very common even with family. You know, some people in the chat are saying, you know, family can even be worse in some cases. But you could make a plan. Let's say you get laid off and you've got this plan now to start up your own business. You have a strategy. You have a solution. You have something that creates value. A lot of people in your inner circle ah, don't do that. It's too risky. Um, you know, you got a mortgage to pay. You're going to have a family soon. You have a family, you have a baby on the way. Whatever argument they use, just go and play it safe and go and get a job. Just go and get another job. Okay, well, that's one option. But you've, you've actually got a good plan to go and do something. And you're at a position where you don't have a job. And your back is kind of up against the wall. And I've always said this, you know, this is one of the best times to go and take a stab at something, at, at wanting to become an entrepreneur when you got your back up against the wall. People are saying, don't do it. Go get a job. Go go play something safe. Don't play to win. Play not to lose, right? Crabs in a bucket. They want to pull you back in, right? That's just how it is, you know? These are people that you have to let go. Just, you don't have to be mean about it. Get lost, pound sand. I'm never going to talk to you again. Just stop responding to them. Hey, you know, we've got this event coming up. Da, da, da. Fine. I'm busy. I've got plans. I'm working on my new project. That thing that, you know, you said was getting off the ground. Work so hard that your bank account looks like a phone number. Work so hard that people start calling you and get success, of course. Work so hard and be successful that people start calling you that doubted you, asking you for a job. I remember... It was about three years, maybe three and a half years in to running my debt business. And people were, the, the people that were previously telling me not to do it, it won't work, you won't get it off the ground. There's whatever barrier, or whatever reason why they said not to do it. Then between three to four years later, when they saw the success, when they saw me on the front page of the business section in the, on the Toronto Star, when they saw all of these things, when they heard me on the radio running ads, when they saw me talking to um, 
Gail Bass Oxley from Till Death to His Part sort of thing, or there was a social media photograph or something like that. Hey, Rich, how's it going? Haven't talked to you in a while. That's when my LinkedIn started to blow up with people asking questions all the time. Hey, you know, you're hiring. There's anything that I can do? <laughs> you say people that doubted you a few years before, right? That's crabs in a bucket, man. Just leave them in the bucket. They want you to pull them out of the bucket. They didn't want to push you out of the bucket. They wanted to pull you back in. And now they want you to pull them out of the bucket. See what I'm saying here? Let me get uh, Mikhail over here and we'll do this call in. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, Rich. Doing great. I'm living in Cyprus now. Good to see you again. Good to see you. How's Cyprus going? Yeah, fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, you have really fantastic opportunities here. Good. Uh, life's good now. It's it's got to be late at night over there. What is it like? It's four three. In the it's three a.m. right now. Three a.m. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm working as a freelancer now, and uh, yeah, um, I'm a little bit more flexible now. And then it was like, oh, it's three a.m. And then wait a second, Rich is a live show now. I'm in Europe. I never was able to join. Now it's my uh, chance. All right. What do you know. got for me, man? Yeah, um, basically two things. I I think the topic you're talking about today is very, very important. Uh, people who aren't your friends, I want to share an experience, even though I'm sure. only 26. Go ahead. Um, you know, it's very interesting. There was this one guy I went to a grammar school with. So in German, it's called grammar school. In English, it's called high school, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. He's the first friends you make. In general, you don't have really much in common. I mean... Maybe you sit uh, in the same class or maybe uh, you have the same ethnic background or something like this. It's nothing uh, special. And uh, yeah, he had this really bad, um, how should I say, behavior. He used to badmouth people around him, etc. not only me. And uh, over the years, there was a really, really bad dynamic, which uh, just developed over the time, which I didn't realize back then. You said that he was bad mouthing people. Was he doing it to their face or behind their back? Both, both. I mean, uh, oh, okay. like in front of people, embarrassing them and saying, "Ah, you're so stupid." And, uh, no, it was it was just a joke, etc. So just mm -hmm. uh, relevating it, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, don't don't do it to him. Don't uh, come up with the idea to do it to him. Then uh, his ego will trigger, etc. Then he doesn't understand it. Then it's not fun anymore. So whatever. Uh, what I just want to say is sometimes you don't even realize what kind of um, bad dynamics uh, develop over the time, especially if you are friends with this person since years. And uh, one day, there, I think there was a day, I think this was last year or one and a half year ago, I think it was just before I joined your community. Uh, he crossed the line. He crossed the red line and uh, I was what sitting was the there. Line? And was what did he do? About yeah, it's basically, he basically made uh, fun of um, a family topic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some family uh, topic I have. I talk with him about this because I thought he's my friend and I thought I can uh, trust him with this, etc. Now, uh, to, um, how should I say, to entertain himself, he uh, crossed the line about uh, me and a uh, family member. And then I said, okay, um, this cross line... Uh, F off, I want to say it on a compliant way so YouTube doesn't yeah. do anything. And uh, yeah, then he said, yeah, can't we talk about it uh, again? I didn't mean it like this, etc." And I said, no, there's no need to do it. And uh, I just don't want to have you in my life anymore. Yeah. And then he said something which really stuck into my head. And he said, why are you doing this from today to tomorrow? I mean, with this since years. And I was thinking about this for a long, long time. And uh, actually, he was right. To some degree, I mean, okay, I was young. I was like 14 or 15 when we first met. I mean, I'm 26 now, so obviously there was some kind of uh, development. But then I thought about this and I thought, yeah, exactly. Uh, this developed over uh, a certain time. And uh, I should have uh, crossed, uh, I should have, um, he crossed the line uh, often and I made him comfortable crossing this line over and over again. So I should have uh, removed him out of my life before. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so look, let me touch on that. You know, like the second chances when it comes to friends, you know, these guys that probably aren't your friends and, you know, you come to establish it pretty quick. Uh, th this guy that I was dealing with in my teens, my 20s, uh, even in my early 30s, 
he he was what I would have called one of my best friends, like definitely like the top three. And it it got to the point where the guy colluded to basically take down my business and compete against it directly. There was a lawsuit involved. Um, when that wrapped up and I won that and then we settled, then I got this random email. I think it was an email at the time. Hey man, sorry about everything that happened. Shouldn't have gone down that way. Can we just let bygones be got bygones and be friends again and get a coffee or something like that? And I thought to myself, you double crossed me. You screwed me over. You cost me a ton of money and legal fees. Didn't sleep nights over the whole thing. And I should give you a second chance, right? Like this is like the guy, a chick going out and, and banging your bet, like your best friend, like your woman going out and banging your best friend. Like this is a high level DEFCON five sort of betrayal. And I just wrote him a quick line back and I said, you're a ghost to lose my number. I'm never going to respond to you again. And that's how you have to treat it. I think, you know, like just, you know, that whole notion of ghosting that's so popular today, you could say that I invented it over 20 years ago. You just look at them as a ghost. That's it. They, they just don't exist. You don't see them. The text comes in, the phone rings, you can block them if you want, but you just don't see them anymore. They don't exist. And don't let them see you. Uh, people that betray you at like a DEF CON 5 level, like high level shit like that, you cut them off. Don't even let them see you on your social media. These people are fucking cancerous, right? Like, again, Absolutely. like these are the kind of people that will go out of their way to talk shit about you, to try to ruin your uh, character. They'll use character assassination techniques. Um, it's weird, man, because like it didn't exist to the regard that it does today where you can use social media or you can use YouTube. Like you see it all the time with YouTube, right? Like you see these creators fighting with each other. It's like this guy does a hit piece and then this guy does a hit piece and they go back and forth on that whole Mano Swamp hit piece thing back and forth. It's a real deal, right? Getting rid of these people as soon as you identify them is critical. Identify them quickly and get rid of them. Make sense? Absolutely. I mean, sometimes you don't even realize uh, what kind of burden they used to be before till you drop them off. I mean, yeah. it's really crazy. I think the cancer analogy you made is uh, very, very good. Cancer yeah. is cancer, Definitely. man. You cut it out. Absolutely. See you later, buddy. Absolutely. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Get some rest. Take eh? care. Three o'clock in the morning in freaking Cyprus. Holy smokes. Um, my mom spent some time growing up in Cyprus, actually. It's on, it's on my list of places to visit. Uh, there's a comment here. My story is similar to Cowboys. Got divorced and had false accusations. A group of friends ghosted me except one. She moved in with him and his wife. And they saw how she really was. Yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting how um, the stories that these women tell about you. Oh, he was incompetent. He was dangerous. He was scary. Uh, you know, he was abusive, without frame or context or probably even evidence. You know, for the most part. Um, that's the easy way to assassinate a man's character, especially if you're in a relationship with a woman and you get married, you know, you get married, you get divorced or you break up sort of thing, your LTR. Uh, it's very easy for a woman to say, oh, you know, he was abusive or he was controlling or he was financially abusive. He was physically abusive. He was whatever type of abusive that they might want to label on it. And if your friends, these people that know you, they don't follow your path you know, the wolf of light, the wolf of darkness, right? You know, which one wins the one that you feed sort of thing. If you get these crazies that want to collaborate with each other because believe all women, or maybe it's like, you know, one of your friends that wants to bang her now because, you know, she's single sort of thing. That happens too. I've seen that before. Um, let it go. You know, these guys have shown you who they are and what they're all about. Don't believe it. Um, guys, again, the link to join. Hop in and ask a question. The StreamYard link is right at the top. Hit it. Make sure you get in. Get your question answered tonight live. Um, let's see what we got going on here in the chat while we're waiting for you guys to click in. Story. I've I've opened up the chat a little bit more to let guys that are subscribed to the channel over a longer period of time um, hit it. Uh, Delta, if you're having problems with the link, Make sure you've got a good internet connection. So if you click that link and it's not working, it could be because you've got a shit connection. It's just like anything else. If you're using FaceTime or Skype, 
make sure you have a good connection, you know, if you're going to click in. And if you have an issue with it, like it's a lower bandwidth, just leave your cam camera off. It doesn't matter. Um, the audio portion is more important. So don't worry about, you know, running your camera if your connection's uh, on the lower end of the side. Just, uh, clear, clear, just clear up the bandwidth by doing it that way. Yeah, Jaren's in the chat. He says, I recently went through and cleaned up my Instagram. Still have more to go. Not a bad idea to remove thoughts and strangers from your feed. Um, yeah, if you're on a public page on, on Instagram, you're going to get followers like that, which is fine. But if but if you're running private private on social media and you're not really a public, fil a public figure trying to build an audience, it's like, why are these people following you? Like, who are they? Why are you following them? Sort of like, clean it up. It's not a popularity contest. You know, it just isn't. It's only... It's only important for influence if you're building a business online sort of thing and you want to build an audience. That's key. That's important. Yeah. They'll talk shit about you to your face, but never behind your back. That's exactly what you want, man. As soon as you hear one of your friends, one of your purported friends talking shit behind your back, it's done. There's no fixing that. You can't trust somebody that's a shit talker behind your back. Trust them when they shit talk your face. Okay. The last thing you want is somebody that's kind to your face and then talk shit behind your back. The other thing too is if you're, you know, the, we've got all these group chats out there now. And if you're in a group chat and you have a friend, like one of these close friends that I'm telling you probably isn't your friend, that's talking shit about other people continuously, they're going to talk shit about you. They will. It's it's only a matter of time. If they're randomly pointing at this guy and this guy and this guy and that guy out there, even in you know the professional scope of things, like if you're in credit facilities, if you're in finance products, if you're in leasing, if you're in acquisitions, you know, depending on your line of work, and there's discussion amongst the group, and there's always that one or two guys. There's always one guy that's always talking shit about everybody else behind their back. You can bet that guy will talk shit about you behind your back eventually. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. You don't want people like that in your circle, man. They're not friends. They're not useful. They're not going to be helpful. They certainly aren't going to support you. They won't have your back when shit goes down, when shit hits the fan. If you ever need them, that's, that's the strongest indicator. You know, I've said this before. Your net work is your net worth, right? So... You should be able to take away somebody's wealth, their assets, their bank accounts, their cars, their homes, you know, whatever they happen to have. A good network should be so reliable that you can steal a man's net worth, plop him in another part of the world. And as long as he has his contact list on his phones, he has his network available to him. He should be able to reacquire all those things that were stolen from him within a couple of years. It's only a matter of time if you have a good network. Again, your network is your net worth. People don't put enough emphasis on that. They let people into their life, into their circle, into their day-to-day, -day, into their group chats, into their whatever they happen to be doing that don't add any value to it. Your network is your net worth, right? No pressure, no diamonds. That's another good one that I really like too. All right, let's see what Alton's got for us here. Hey, man. Hey, Rich. How's it going? I, uh, I've been on your show before, but uh, yeah, I was just calling tonight? in because, yeah, I lost basically lost all my friends when uh, what happened when I became red pilled, basically oh. all the stuff and left. So, <laughs> so what happened? You got red pilled and they all ran off? Yeah. So, I read they your... call you a misogynist or, yep, yep. So, I read your first book that you recommended on one of your earlier streams, which Evolution of Desire. Good book. Yeah, and then I read this one, which uh, I think That's you love to know. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, if you didn't see, I've got the Red Flags chapter bookmarked in here, so yeah. I can uh, read through it. Yeah. But yeah, just um, you know, just trying to figure out how to essentially build a community now. I mean, I uh, well, firstly, lost all my friends because I became red pill. Can, can you tell me the story about how that went down with your friends? Like why they bounced on you? Why they turned their backs on you? And, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, um, one of my closer friends and I had a, like a very personal conversation. You know, I trusted him as a friend with confidence. I mean, he had, we, I've known him since I was a kid. You know, he's ratted on me before mm -hmm. uh, for like little things, you know, to boost himself up. But um, yeah, essentially what ended up happening was we had a personal conversation about some different topics. And then um, 
before that had happened, we went on a trip um, and they brought up Andrew Tate. I was like, dude, I like the guy, mm. you know, he seems pretty solid. He says some, you know, things that are like, um, you know, out there sometimes, but you know, I, I think a lot of what he says is solid. So mm. basically everyone that heard about that and everybody that was in uh, that community with him started, um, started basically sending me like when he was joking about stuff or like, don't vape. Oh, taking you know, stuff out of context. Saying, yeah, oh, you support just, this guy waving yeah. the machete around. Yeah, exactly. Saying, yeah. That's one. Yeah. That so one? they, yeah, okay. my phone was just blown up all the time with just, you okay. know, Andrew Tate short clips of that were completely out of context. And I was just like, okay, whatever, you know, at this point, but, um, yeah, then, um, so yeah, they basically all up and left and him and I had a, you know, personal conversation about some different things. And he's like, Oh, you're a misogynist. You don't think that women should get jobs. And I'm like, listen, if I'm going to marry a woman, I should be financially capable to support us both. And if she wants to work, she can work, but she shouldn't mm -hmm. have to do that. If that's the kind of situation that I want to get into, you know, mm -hmm. in a long-term relationship or something like that. Um, and the sense of like, or marriage, if I wanted to marry a woman, she should not feel compelled to work unless she wants to, you know, she should feel like comfortable being able to take care of the house and things like that. And he didn't like this as friend of yours had an issue with that. Well, no, he, uh, basically blasted me and said, you know, I basically opened up to him and told him what my real ideology was and what I did believe. And, you know, I was like, you know, Andrew Tate does say some outlandish things sometimes, mm. you know, everybody does, but yeah, basically we had, um, an altercation about that. And then, um, all of the people that were in that network, one of the uh, close friends that I had messaged me and was like, hey, I just wanted to let you know shit's getting talked about you behind your back. And then I was just like, what are you talking about? Mm, there's a and, deal breaker right there. Yeah. So then um, they actually came to me and they were like, so what happened? And so I explained it to her and she was like, well, I fully agree with what you're saying right now. Like that definitely makes sense. So I was just mm -hmm. like, yeah, so I don't understand, but no, since then, and again, since reading this book and reading your book, I just see things through a different lens now. And mm -hmm. it's it's uh, been a lot harder to make friends or even initiate conversations with people because I, you know, I first I ask myself, how does this serve me? You know, like you mm -hmm. always say, how does it serve me? And then the second question I ask is like, is this person interesting enough to, you know, basically be around? Are they really mm -hmm. doing something with their life? So those are like the two questions that I'm constantly asking myself. And um, a lot of times, yeah. the answer is no. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, you, you know, you travel through these different chapters, these different epochs in your life, and you'll find that, you know, friends will come and go and they're not permanent. It's like yeah. the whole, hey, she's not yours. It was just your turn. That can be applied to a lot of friendships that you have, right? They're not your friends or they're probably not your friends. Maybe it's just your turn being friends with them sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get talked to, talked about enough because too, like too many guys focus on too much of the basic stuff, which is just chasing poon, you know, for the most part, right. and that gets boring after a while. Right. Um, you know, having strong connections with other men is far better in my opinion, especially when you're doing cool shit together. Cause the laughs you have are always a good time. So your next question then was how do you find a new group of guys to hang out with that are more aligned with your mindset? Yeah. Like, uh, basically I go to the gym I haven't been working on my own business. Uh, you have a sauna think, at the gym? Uh, unfortunately, we don't. It's just Planet Fitness, and this location doesn't really have. They have massage chairs and tanning beds, move, and that's basically move to it. a move to a bigger gym that's got a dry sauna. Okay. Some of the some of the best conversations I've had in the last like year or two have happened in the sauna because you just shoot the shit, right? Like, right. They'll start talking about something, and then you can chime in on topics that you're interested in. Um. I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot of space in my calendar schedule for new friends, you know, if I'm being honest, but if you're lacking that in that regard, that's a good place to hop into conversations where, I mean, you're in there for 20 minutes, right? So it's like chop it up on a topic. Um, so there's that. I would definitely join some sort of fight dojo, get into some kind of combat sports that you're interested in. A lot yeah. of them have like a particular schedule and it's like okay monday night at six o'clock there's krav maga tuesday night there's kickboxing wednesday we're doing cali sticks thursday it's it's two hours of uh striking drills both boxing and, and kick so just 
find something that lets you sort of play with a, a few different areas. And a lot of those guys are really cool too. Like, I don't know too many fighters that aren't red pilled. There's a couple. There, there was one that I posted on my Twitter feed in the last 10 days or so. I can't remember his name, but he was an Irish fighter. Uh, I think he's 24 years old and he's dating a woman that's 15 years older than him. And he changed his last name to her last name. So her kid, because she was a single mom, wouldn't feel left out. Right. So uh, like you're not going to get them ever like there's no one area where it's like everybody is always going to be aligned with the sort of thinking that you have mental point of origin, the run plug, the red pill sort of thing. You're not going to find it everywhere in all cases. You know what I'm saying? But just but just get into those areas. The other thing that you can do, where do you live in what uh, state? Uh, Indiana. All right. You, yeah, there's there's a couple of guys that I know in it. Indiana personally that are in my community. Um, I don't have the map that I can pull up because it shows everybody's name when I pull it up, but we've got a lot of, like most of our members are in North America. So if you live in the States or if you live in Canada and you're close to a large urban city or a larger urban city, chances are you're going to find members in there. So if you join that community, then you have an opportunity to network with those guys. You'll also have opportunities, you know, if you, if you stick with it, because a lot of guys will, they'll just sign up for my men's community and they'll be like, all right, what does it start raining money and bitches? And it's like, that's not how it works. <laughs> just get in, make yourself yeah. known, help people out. Uh, if there's a large meetup, show up for it. Because once you sort of move for, you know, through those ranks and then you kind of get into the generals tier, then that's when you get the opportunities to hang out with me and do some cool shit, you know, with a closer circle of friends that I roll. Right. So for it's, sure. it's just investing into those communities and making sure that you're always surrounding yourself with, networkable usable guys and not usable in the sense where you use them but useful is yeah. what i meant to to say useful guys that will that will improve your lives is all that it boils down to but just get out there and do shit that you like man and look for good guys and when you start finding them then spend more time with them hey you know do you guys like doing this you want to train together you want to fight together you want to spar sometime you know let's you know let's get our cardio up and work on something challenge yourselves that's what you want you want guys that are going to challenge you like let's yeah. do cool shit yeah for sure um yeah another point going back to what you said about uh she's not yours it's just your turn i actually just had that happen so i just recently um was working a nine to five where i made twenty eight thousand dollars a year and then mm -hmm. uh i quit and now i have my i have actually kind of like two businesses one like an actual firm business and then one that's kind of just starting but um yeah, basically, I told the girl, I was like, listen, fun stuff's, you know, not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to, you know, we're going to have to slow down on the fun stuff for right now because uh, money's a little tight. And then she just up and left. So and it's, just, it's like, you all right. You want to test your character? I'm poor. Yeah, exactly. You want to test your character? My business isn't doing so well right now. So you're going to have to make dinner tonight. We're not going out for dinner. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, <laughs> That's a good way to test her if you want. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, I was really upset about it today and then I went to the gym and I was like, oh yeah, you know, it's actually probably better this way. <laughs> a sick pump solves a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> it? It literally does. It literally does. Yeah. It solves so much. You feel uh, good. Anyway, man, yeah. I got to grab a few of the other guys in here. So wish you cool. the best for that, but hopefully we'll see you on the inside. Yeah. Okay? Uh, again, get the book, guys. It's literally it, yeah. it is a lifesaver. When, when and you're at low points, just read for it. and do me a solid. If you do get the book and you got value out of it, go to Amazon, write a review, and let guys know what value you got out of reading the book. It really helps out a lot. Thanks, man. See you, buddy. All right. All right. Uh, let's see what Fa Fabrizio has for us. Hey, man. Hello, Rich. Can you... Can what do you nice got for to, me nice tonight? To... So yes, I have a similar question on the same one as before. Um, so to provide some context, I live in the US in Dallas to be specific. I'm okay. from South America. Uh, currently I'm working as a data scientist. I'm making uh, money, I would say, but uh, I don't feel uh, satisfied uh, with what I'm doing, what I'm making. Um, my background is in mathematics. I have studied uh, machine learning or, and artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, but the question that I have is, I'm trying to push myself to start a business, uh, but the idea that it's always making it difficult for me is the idea to start with, or how, or if I should do something to start it 
myself to start uh, something on my own before adding some extra people. Um, that's the first thing. Uh, and also the, the second thing is that uh, I started follow, following you around four or five years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Casually, I stumbled with your channel when I wanted to buy sports cars. Um, right now, I have two sports cars. And the other question is, how can I make uh, most of the benefit of the cars I have now to meet people that is uh, like mine? Car clubs. Car clubs, for sure. That's one thing that I forgot to mention is, you know, if you're a car guy, like if you have Porsches, I would join a Porsche uh, group. Uh, there's going to be a, a Facebook group, probably for your state, definitely for your country. Um, I would join, I mean, if you've got uh, a Porsche or if you've got Porsches, then I would join a supercar club that does drives, ca cars and coffees, meets and rallies. It's going to take a bit for you to sort of like break into the group and develop reputation and, and friendships, but you just you just do it. Right. Like you just start hanging out with the guys. You might hang out with the Spanish speaking guys. Right. You might hang out with the guys from where, you know, whatever country you're from, from South America sort of thing, even in the niches. Right. Like there's like there's these downstream niches, you know, that you're sort of going to get into with different car communities. It doesn't always have to be mid engine supercars you're going to hang out with. It might just be the Porsche guys. Right. But you have to put the time in. You know, you have to show up for the car meets. You have to, when people ask you questions, you're friendly and you help them out. Then you ask them questions and you sort of develop that friendships. Like, like th these are just basic calibration of social skills, you know, when you start doing things like that. So that's for the friend stuff. But as far as the business stuff, I wasn't clear on your business question. Can you maybe ask me that again, but rephrase it? So the, the question is, um, I find it difficult to find an idea that I can't capitalize um, you don't have a business idea. So I, I feel that I have the skills, uh, I have the knowledge, but I don't know how to make those things onto a business. Uh, I don't know uh, if I should start looking for people that have the similar mindset or start something myself. You want to start something yourself. You don't have my school of entrepreneurship course, do you? No, I, I'm, I'm considering taking it, yes. Yeah, uh, it'll it'll open up for enrollment probably end of summer will be the next time um you want some kind of like some kind of a framework laying out what a good business looks like because most people engineer difficult businesses they engineer businesses that are hard to run they're they force you to compete on price um it makes it very difficult to to sell or move product depending on how you set it up so you want to engineer it right from the get-go which is basically what the course is. And that's, it's got nine hours of lecture. So I can't break it all down for you in a quick 10 minute oh, call. So for instance, um, um, I would study, yeah. I would study greatness, right? Um, if you're, you're an AI or was it computer learning? You said, you said your background was in mathematics. Like, yes, it's ma mathematics and artificial intelligence. Yes. So anything that you can find biography wise from guys that are entrepreneurs that talk a lot about AI. Um, I think, um, I think Lex Freeman has had some pretty good guests on his podcast in that space, probably find an expert or two and then follow their stuff. Uh, if they have a book, read it. If they have a biography sort of thing, if they have a course, you can take a look at it. Um, but there's lots of opportunity for AI in the future, for sure. It's going to be one of the fastest growing areas. So find a problem and then offer a solution to that problem. Ideally with subscription revenue. So they have to subscribe to the service monthly, you know, to continue using it. That would be the best way to do it. Something service-based, something maybe information-based. Don't move physical products. They're much more of a pain in the ass, you know, to deal with. But those are the things that I would look at to sort of start with. So, and um, I was also find, um, wondering uh, how many people in your group have that background? Uh, because I'm in looking AI? at AI. Yes. I think there's a few guys in computer learning and AI in my group for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen the conversations out there. So um, that's something else to consider too, if you want to join that uh, tier. That's the 1% uh, community. Yes, because uh, in my circle, in my immediate circle, no one has that uh, mindset of starting something on their own and even less. Uh, which uh, which uh, uh, South American country are you from? So I'm from Ecuador. Ecuador, okay. How long have you been yes, in Dallas? 
um, for six months, but I came here to the U.S. around six years ago. I came here mm. to obtain a, a degree, a graduate degree. Okay. And you're a permanent resident now, or you have a green card, or like what's your status? I'm in the process of obtaining the, the green card. I have paid uh, an attorney uh, firm to help me with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the process. Okay. All right. Well, I wish you the best luck. Best of luck with that, man. It's going to be some work for you to to get up there. Um, develop a network, though, because you're sort of newer to the country. So get to know people in the space. Another really good way to sort of get yourself integrated it, into it is if there's a event, if there's a, a conference, for example, go to them. If you don't have the means to go to them because they're priced out for you, another option is to just volunteer at them. You know, um, that's another really good way to get yourselves in those rooms and make some really good connections. So those are the things that I'd be looking at. Okay. That's a really good advice. All right, man. Good luck with that. Thank you. See you, buddy. All right. Let me, uh, we got Xander here in the waiting area. So we'll try to get through a few more calls here. Uh, Xander, what's up, buddy? What do you got for me tonight? Uh, nothing much. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, you're loud and clear. Awesome. Good. So I have a situation you were talking about, like men betraying men earlier. Um, so I have an ex. It says the mother of my child, uh, my daughter, lived with her. And she cheated on me with a friend of mine who now beats her. So, and I'm in Texas, and Texas has penal code 22.06, uh, mutual combat. Should I initiate a fight with this guy underneath that penal code to get him to leave for the protection of both her and my daughter? Okay, so let me see if I understand this correctly. So your ex, you have a daughter with her. She's living with a guy that's physically abusive to her and your child. Not my child, to just her. her. But I'm worried about it uh, translating to over child. to her. How old's your daughter? She just turned two in December. Yeah, what are the one of the biggest risks for children, especially little girls, is non blood red non blood relatives living in that same house. Girls mm -hmm. that like moms that make bad choices and bring losers like this into the house expose your kid to significant risk. Anything from physical abuse to sexual abuse. You mm -hmm. You, like you need to have a conversation with your kid's mom about shit like this. She's not going to want to hear it. She's, she's going to, Oh, don't worry about it. I got it under control. Look, man, uh, if you date enough women and they start telling you about their childhood and their, uh, you know, their growing pains, you hear a lot of stories about stepbrothers and stepfathers abusing, whether physically or sexually when they were growing up, setting that aside, Sorry. So what's this? So what's this Texas penal code? So what is this like a duel? Like you challenge them to a duel? <laughs> exactly. It's a uh, fist against fist uh, with no intention of serious bodily harm. It's basically like, hey, if y'all want to have a fist fight, you can. Mm -hmm. As long as you both agree to this penal code, no legal repercussions. Nobody can go to jail. Uh, so I would print it off, have us both sign it. And, you know, that's interesting. So it's like a boxing match. It, yeah, essentially. Except for you're probably bare knuckle fighting him. Yes. Um, I don't know that I like that. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I like it either. But this particular guy, I've known him since I was in high school, and that's pretty much the only thing that he responds to. Is he a uh, mooch? Is he a mooch? Like, is he living off her, or is she living off him? Uh. He actually lives on his own somewhere, but before that, he actually was cheating on his girlfriend uh, when he didn't have a job with uh, my uh, my ex. So. Why doesn't your ex just change the locks in the house and just get rid of him? She doesn't want to get rid of him. That's the thing. Oh, okay. So, sh so she's an idiot then, basically. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of an understatement. I do mean, you have, do you have shared custody of your kid? There is no uh, custody in place. We just have a verbal agreement. I get her every single weekend, and just about every weekend I go over there, his truck is there, his bike is there. I mean, this is a problem for your kid more than anything. I wouldn't worry about yeah. the, the kid's mom because she's going to do what she's going to do, and she clearly doesn't make very intelligent choices, so that's not going to change. 
Um, what I would be aiming at doing is, is getting getting t more time with the kid and maybe even having custody of the kid because if she's not with this douchebag that's beat, beating her or like doing whatever it is that he happens to be doing she's just going to replace him with another douchebag yeah like yeah. women that make these bad choices with with men that they select that they want to invite in their lives they tend to do it over and over again right and at some point your kid's going to get caught up in the crossfire now do you want to challenge him to a duel and fight him Go for it if you want, but like, what are the outcomes? He beats the living shit out of you. You walk away with your tail between your legs. You beat the living shit out of him. He walks away with his tail between the legs. You beat the crap out of each other. It doesn't matter. People are going to get beat. Yeah. Right. How old are you? Turned 31 in March. Do you know how to fight? A little bit. Yeah. Does he know how to fight? That one, I don't know. Um, he's he's kind of this guy that tells a lot of stories, and I don't really know the validity of all of them. Um, so I really don't know. But with the, the way that he boasts about it, kind of insinuates that he doesn't really know how to. See, I mean, the problem with this is it's kind of simpy behavior because you're trying to pull protect the honor of milady right like the main reason why you're and why because she's behaving like an idiot like why does she even have this guy in her life would be the first question i'd be at. like why would you fight a guy that's banging your ex lives in the house with her and she doesn't want to get rid of him like what's the point of that like what is the best possible outcome here the best possible outcome is you win and you send him off with his tail between his legs and probably nothing will change. The worst is that he beats the living crap out of you and embarrasses you. And he's now the dominant alpha gorilla here. Hmm. My thought process, it wasn't even necessarily about my ex. Uh, it was just the fact of uh, violence seems like the only thing that he responds to. And well, well, violence is a solution, but it should be a last last ditch type of solution yeah. what other avenues can you go down to get rid of this loser and get him away from your daughter because it's not about your ex-girlfriend it's about getting away from your daughter yeah uh so i actually do have a business idea um that if i can get it going it'll gross 800k a year net 600 if i can get that going then I will have the financial ability to hire whoever I want and just be able to just take my daughter. No question to ask because she's in no position. She lives, I'm pretty sure, in is what's considered Section 8 housing now, governmental housing. Um, the fact of this dude is abusive. And there's actually a CPS case open right now because somebody. Why did you guys in, part ways? Why aren't, why aren't you together with your kid's mom? Why am I not? Yeah, why are you not with her? Oh, uh, because I was an over-the-road truck driver, and this guy was one of my friends, and she was cheating on me with him while I was on the road. And mm. the it came to a head three days before my birthday of last year uh, when I got a call at 2 o'clock in the morning. This guy threatened our landlord, and he evicted us, and that was where we split up. What did you... Do you remember at the start of the show we were talking about friends and this guy was a friend of yours? This guy is n not only the kind of guy that beats women, but he's also the kind of guy that bangs your girlfriend while you're driving on the road. Very, very weak-minded. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of all of this, like the root of a lot of all these problems starts with you, my friend. Like if you have to, if you have to get to the point where your only option is to challenge the guy to a duel and violence is the only way that you think that you can solve this, like you've arrived here today, like the results that you have right now in mm. your life with this crazy ex, with this ex friend of yours that's now banging your ex and around your daughter a lot, a woman that you have a child with that you don't see as much as you'd like to, and your best response to all of this is let's challenge him to a duel. You have to have better options. Right. I mean, like the like the beliefs that you're using to make these choices to get these results aren't really working for you. The thing that you can control is yourself here. You can't control your ex and who she chooses. You can't control your ex. 
you know, she banged this guy. Your friend's a piece yeah. of shit. You know, he's banging your girlfriend while you're on the road. Like, you just take all of these ingredients, you put them in a blender, and you turn it on, turn on the blender, and you've got a shit shake. Right. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of this all starts with you and and leveling yourself up and putting yourself in a better position so that you're not dealing with shit women, so that you're not dealing with shit friends that'll bang your girl. Right. So you're not dealing with women that'll bang your best friend. Right. Women that can look up to you and see you as their best option. So they're not going to run around like this. Everything else is just temporary. Like everything else that you're that you're talking about is just a band aid. Talking about the fighting? Yeah. It's all just a band aid, yeah. man. Like the like the self improvement, like working on yourself is where you need to go. It's a longer term plan and it's a longer term plan. It's a much longer term plan. But it's what needs to happen here so you don't end back up in the same scenario because in 12 months you could be having the same conversation got a new girl we knocked her up she cheated on me when i was on the road she's banging another friend of mine you're going to end up in the same boat again right i'd be asking questions like why did i choose a chick that would bang my friend why did i have a friend in my inner circle that would bang my girl why is this guy abusive to women like why am i hanging around guys that beat women right see what i'm saying yeah but Dual, dual is your only option. <laughs> Challenge him to a dual is your only option, at, you know, at this stage. But you've got to make better choices going forward. Yeah, it, it was actually this particular incident uh, that actually full on red pilled me. And I read your book, the uh, oh God, the Unplugged Alpha, mm -hmm. and going through the red flags chapter. Yeah, she she ticked a lot of boxes on that. Do you have any? Do you have any social services that you can call on as a father, child, protective services? I've got concerns, you know, this guy because he's beating the mother, you know, could potentially be, you know, beat my child. Do you have any recourse there with public services? Well, uh, I know I kind of said it as a little statement earlier, but there is actually a CPS child protective service case open right now mm -hmm. uh, because somebody reported, I'm not sure who, that he was beating on her and so they were worried about the kids as well um i would so there's already a case on that, too. that i would definitely build on that too make it I'd, difficult for him make it difficult for her well the thing i'm worried about with making it difficult for her is her knowing that i'm trying to make it difficult for her and then her just going down to the what is it uh not district attorney the place where these women go for uh, child support and all that kind of stuff yeah. and make it to where that I'm just not able to see my daughter at all and just because you know in America women have mm. more support in that than yeah, guys. Yeah, I mean like you work though, like you've got an income? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, well I mean like do you have a custody schedule like you see in the kid? Uh, like I said, we had the verbal agreement where I get her every weekend well, look, I mean, like verbal agreements aren't aren't the best. You want something a little bit more enforceable. You want a little bit more of a precedent, right? Like you want something that's more like in writing, obviously. Yeah. Um, take take your daughter whenever you can offer. You know, I've got some spare time this weekend. Why don't you mm -hmm. go and do whatever you got to do, things you got to catch up on. I'll take her to Chuck E. Cheese and, you know, we'll do some stuff together. Daddy, daughter sort of night. Like, you know take those opportunities that's a better use of your time you know my opinion than challenging a man to a duel but if that's all you got then that's what you got right um that was uh the the most quickest thing that i could think of because of uh you know how unlevel or unequal the legal system is as far as like family law goes well, if you're going to do it, make sure you win, man. Make sure you enter that realm of, of, of uh, combat with a, a strong position and, you know, the ability to win it. Um, make sure you know what you're doing because uh, fighting is it's not something to be taken lightly, man. Yeah, no, that's that's one of the reasons why I came on here and asked. Start, look, like, honestly, man, take a good look at yourself and, and ask yourself, beliefs choices results beliefs lead to choices that you make every day choices will lead to the results that you got you 
you have an internal belief somewhere that led you to believe that she would be a good choice to sleep with, to put a baby in, to start a relationship with. You made a choice at some point based on your beliefs that you hold true to allow this guy to be your friend, to introduce him to your girl, maybe hang out together at some point, invite him over for a barbecue. You know, like you've, you've held these beliefs within yourself to drive to choices that have gotten you the results that you're at today. This is the part of the universe that you can control the best is your belief system. Fixing your belief system and making better choices will avoid these kinds of results in the future. Just step back and look at it from that perspective. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Xander. Good luck with that. That's a tough one, man. That's, that's, you know, I feel for guys like that. It fucking sucks. It really does. Um, all right, I think I've got time for one more. Uh, the reasonable was waiting the longest, so I'll bring him in. Hey, Hello, doing? Mr. Reasonable. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me today. Good, man. What do you got for me tonight? First off, let me just say that I just went through the same, a lot of the same stuff he's going through, minus the, the prick. And uh, he's on the right path if he's trying, if he's trying to, uh, if he's staying away from thinking about it too much. Mm hmm. You know, I mean, he's, don't put too much time into thinking about it. If you got a plan of action, execute it. And if not, then just let it go. Okay. Um, I mean, and, and always be aware if you got an opportunity to attain some information, information is power, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, so it's going into that. So imagine the world resets right now. We have the same skills we have, but we don't have the same knowledge, but we have all of our skills. And I want to start an online business right now today. Where would I start? What would I do? What's a good idea for me to, or what, where should I go even uh, look it up? You're asking me what the best business is to start. Yes, sir. Or just an opinion. My opinion when it comes to entrepreneurship is to get the school of entrepreneurship. It's a course that I've created that answers this question with nine plus hours of lectures, courses, and you've got monthly Zoom calls because most people don't know what they're getting into when it comes to business. And they'll just say, what is the best business to start? And then they'll come across things like fulfilled by Amazon or they'll get up, come across something with a Shopify store by, I'm just going to mute you because you're getting a little bit of feedback there. Um, like a Shopify store where they go and where am I getting feedback from? There we go. Sorry. Click the wrong one. Yeah. Just keep yourself muted. Thanks. Um, or, um, some sort of arbitrage. These are all simple and, you know, convenient, uh, paths. And then you've got these other things like copywriting and, uh, email marketing. I get dozens of these emails every single day from, from people that think that this is the quickest path to, to wealth you know, to move some trinket on, you know, some kind of store or to blind D DM or email people offering them their copywriting services. And they're mostly a waste of time. Um, again, it, it's like I've, like I've put out nine hours worth of content in a course to help guys answer this question. And I always get this every once in a while, somebody's all, Hey, what's the best business to start in today's environment? What would you do if, you know, if you were plopped in the middle of nowhere sort of thing. And what I would do would be completely different from a guy that's never run a business before, right? Because I have a network because I have access to a lot of knowledge and, and skills that most people don't have. There's no easy answer to this. And to be honest with you, anybody telling you that there's an easy answer to this is lying to you. They're fluffing you and they're filling you with, with bullshit and bullshit baffles brains, right? Like, what are you hearing about starting a business when it comes to contemplating that as an idea, Mr. Reasonable? Well, of course, you know, everybody and their sister is telling, telling me just, hey, st st click here and sign your name here and you'll be making this much money tomorrow, maybe even mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and sign up now, you know. Multi-level marketing. Yeah, just uh, and I, I've actually gone to a couple of yeah. marketing seminars. And, and what do you do for a living right now? I'm a bartender and a server. Okay, how much money did you make last year? 55. 55. All right, well, the course is under two grand, it's the best use of two thousand dollars that you can spend if you want to start a business and really get yourself leveled up. So, my advice would be make sure you're on my email list. 
which is always in the uh, top comment of all my videos. I'm going to mute you again because I'm getting feedback. Um, and then when the school opens for enrollment, then get on it. Simple as that. Thanks, man. All right. Um, we've done a full 90. Uh, Moff, I'm going to pull you in for a sec just to sort of wrap up and uh, we'll say goodbye. I'll talk to you privately after the end of the show just to see how everything worked with the green room stuff. Um, but those are a sequence of some pretty good callers. So really good stuff, guys. We're, we'll be back next uh, Monday. Moff will be helping out with the green room stuff and making sure you guys are all sized up and your audio is good. Uh, Moff, stick around for a bit and I'll pull you back in. We'll chat after the show. Um, guys, make sure you hit the like button and uh, drop a comment below just for the algorithms. I'll hit the podcast outro and we'll see you guys next Monday. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha, community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit Total Debt Freedom. .ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned comment on YouTube for all the links mentioned during the show. Peace. All right.